Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome to a new campaign on the channel. Today we are going to be playing some Suzerain, or at least starting to play it, because uh, it could take a while. Uh, now, some of you may have seen uh, when I did a live stream series of this uh, game before, uh, but I'm not necessarily going to assume that you have seen that uh, when I'm talking about uh, this game. So. <laughs> Let's start from the top, and then I'm going to I'm, a lot of this episode, um, I don't know how long it's going to be, but if I'm being perfectly honest, it might end up being one of those things where, uh, in typical Conquering History games fashion, I basically don't unpause in even the first episode. But I hope that you will be, uh, patient with me. So, this, uh, this game is a, um, text-based political role-playing game. Um, in which you are playing President Anton Rain, who's a fictional character, in charge of a fictional country called Swordland in a fictional world. Uh, set in roughly the equivalent of the 1950s, uh, in our timeline. Uh, it's a political drama where we have to make decisions, uh, that mostly influence, uh, our country, but also our cabinet members, our friends, our family. Um, where we can make various sorts of decisions on how corrupt we want to be um, or not be. Do we want to reform our country? Do we want to go authoritarian? Do we want to go right wing? Do we want to go left wing? Do we want to embrace capitalism or communism? Although those have different names in this game, which I'll talk about when we get there. Um, so, I mean, what kind of ideals are you going to have? And then, are you and you know, how is how is your reign going to end? Uh, so I, I did do a vote on my community tab for what kind of path I was going to take. Uh, in the first first game, the first campaign I did of this game was uh, via live stream, and I went with centrism, like reformist centrist. Uh, it went very very well. It was really fun, very interesting, learning the gameplay along the way. Actually got a little bit emotional there toward the end with a certain scene with a certain cabinet member. But tons and tons of fun was had. But this is going to go a lot faster because I'm not interacting with the chat. I'm not having everybody vote on my decisions. I'm actually going to try to go for a specific path. So, as I'm now referring to, uh, I think for the third time, the vote in my community tab. I was um, asking people to vote if they wanted me to go... Um, basically uh the the you know the path of the former dictator of this country uh tarquin soul like kind of try to try to build upon his legacy and go um soulist uh, or if i people wanted me to see a do a run where i go uh basically communism socialism uh in this in this world it's called millennialist because it's named after um uh, the premier figure of that ideology in the world, so it's kind of you could. So when you hear basically like millennialist, you can think of that as like when somebody says that they're a Marxist or that they're a Leninist, uh, so or Marxist Leninist. Um, so, so uh, we're the. It was the tightest vote I think I've ever had in my community tab. It was stuck at fifty fifty for like two days until finally the millennialists got one percent more. Um, so we're gonna go millennialists. So that was kind of a broad term, meaning we're going to go to the left. That might mean we're going to go authoritarian sometimes. That might mean we're going to go democratic. Um, I'm going to kind of pick and choose as we go. Uh, now, before we actually jump into the game, one thing that I want to bring up. Uh, this is not usually something I say before my campaigns. Uh, well, there's, there's two things I actually want to bring up. The first one, this is a little more important, actually. Um... If you are watching this to see a, like, how do I do a perfect millennialist run? I hope I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. How do I do a perfect millennialist run? Um, like, I want to be able to get to the end. I don't want to be assassinated or impeached or lose a war or, or any of the other bad endings you can get. Um, I am not saying that this is going to be it. Now, I have, I will admit, I have tried to look up some guides online. And I do have some referential material here in the other monitor, but... Um, the game has been updated a, a few times already since it came out, uh, where they've added new content, they've changed some of the patches, and there does not appear to be any sort of unified 
um, concept of like, oh, these are always the decisions that work because some things get updated, some things get patched. Um, sometimes some it, it appears that some things are actually RNG and all you could do is increase your odds on certain events happening. Um, so I'm not guaranteeing that this is going to be the perfect playthrough, but that's fine because I think it adds an element of suspense, a very important element of suspense to the game where things could go wrong. Uh, we don't know if they will or not. Um, cause like I said, I've seen no guide, even, even, even stuff that's been very new that's come out since the last patch. I've seen people mentioning on guides, Hey, this didn't work. Or I did this thing like you said, and it didn't, I did this instead. And that got the result you said it was supposed to. So, so basically, I'm not going to be super depending on guides, except for, uh, I guess if I had to say that there was one, I am going to be referring to um, a specific one on neoseeker.com, a decision prompt list, which just informs me which things are going to give me millenniavist um, ideology points, for lack of a better term. I don't need, I'm not necessarily saying I'm going to do a 100% every single decision I'm going to take is millennialist, because I'm sure if I did that, I would lose. I'm sure that if you did that with any ideology, you, you, you'd lose if you went 100% in on it. Um, but it'll just kind of, it's mostly there so that I don't take stuff that's going to take away millennialist uh, points from me. Because... The one, I guess, goal of this campaign that I for sure want to do is get the achievement where I become a millennialist politician. Um, and we might try to get some other political, you know, other achievements along the way because I love going for achievements. They're very fun to me. And this game has very interesting ones. Um, but in terms of, like, am I going to go authoritarian? Am I going to go more libertarian, for lack of a better term? Uh, like, democratic reformism? What brand of millennialism is it going to be? I don't. I'm not really totally sure yet. We're going to figure it out on a case by case basis. So that whole like last five paragraphs I said that was point one. Point two, less important. I don't. I probably don't need to say this, but I, I just want to be totally sure. So this is um, a role playing game, and I and, and I've played a lot of different ideologies on my channel. Um, I got, like everything under the sun, including made up things that in alternate universes. Uh, you know, monarchism, democracy, communism, socialism, uh, capitalism, fascism, Burgundianism, on and on and on. I've done it all, and for and it has. It's been a couple of years since it's come up, but you know, the 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 the, the ideologies I play in these video games do not necessarily reflect my own, and um, but I, I kind of wanted to just bring this up in this particular series because. Um, it is a role-playing game, so if I'm saying or doing things that, I don't know, maybe they come off as uncomfortable for you to hear me say, um, it's part of the role-play, you know, if I, if I end up forming, like, secret police and, sh or shooting minorities or whatever, it's within the context of the role-play, okay? Um, that's all, that's my one, like, you know, blanket qualifier for the whole series. So let's just try to keep that in mind. We're playing a video game here. Think of it like Dungeons and Dragons, except it's political, I guess. I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, but I think it's my understanding. Role plays important in Dungeons and Dragons. Anyway, how about we play this freaking game already, huh? What a concept. Oh, also, one more. Oh, sorry. Little asterisk thing. Um, I'm not going to be using the in game music. I am playing the OST in the other monitor. This is the same thing that I did in the live stream, and that's because, like, for example, if I'm clicking out, because, you know, I told you I am going to be using a guide here, like, like, usually I don't click out of the game when I'm pre-recording it, because that's just a live stream issue, but I am going to be doing it here to reference the decision guides thing in case there's something that, um, I want to make sure that I'm not taking an anti mal uh, decision or something. Uh, that's it. Um, so, so, but when you click out of the game, it cuts the music, so that's why we're going to be using the, uh, the OST from, uh, from here, uh, from the, uh, from the outside, so, like, right now I've paused it, like, I can go up to here to the reform track, I could go to, this is past, things like that. Um, I'll try to, if I think the music's not very appropriate, I'll, I'll, like, change it to something different. How about we play the game now, okay? So, new game, starting a new game will reset your processor, progress, are you sure? Yes. 
Oh, and I also, shoot, did I pull it up? Yeah, so at the end of that live stream campaign that I did, um, we spent a little time determining what outfits I was going to wear for if I was going to go a Solus run or a Melia Vindus run, so I've also got that open in the other monitor so we could, uh, you know, reference what I'm going to dress as. But let's do the prologue, shall we? What's going on here? Oh, uh, yes, the country. You are my enslavement and my freedom. You are my flesh burning like a raw summer night. You are my country. I think that's a bloodish poet who is the, the minority group that are basically supposed to be the Kurds um, in, uh, in this, in this uh, game. All right. 1908, the Kingdom of Swordland. You opened your eyes. You came from... Where did I come from? Um, so... Some of these things, from what I've seen online, some of these decisions are important. Well, not important, important. It's, it's like it's going to completely make or destroy your game. Of course, there's it's like every... What's kind of interesting about this game, especially since there's been more updates since it's released, it, there does not seem to be any singular, or at least they've tried to avoid there being a singular thing that determines the campaign. Um, especially in regards to the war with Rumberg, our neighbor to the north. Um, you know, I said that I'm gonna I'm gonna speak like uh, like you guys have not seen the the pre-recorded series, but also I'm gonna kind of I'm not gonna read every single friggin' thing. Some of the stuff you could pause and read through the codex or whatever, or look up some of the stuff because um, I know that I don't have that big an audience. I'm not sure I'm bringing that many new people. Um, so, but anyway, but for example, like the war with Rumberg, uh, from what I would have what I've read online. It used to be that you just had to choose the specific tactic you wanted to use in the first battle of the war. And it was just like a pick choice A or choice B, and then the one you picked just determined the whole war. The war is much more complicated now. Um, in fact, maybe too complicated from what I've seen people complain about online, is that uh, you now need to do too many things in a row. And it's like, oh, now the war is like almost impossible as opposed to being 50-50. Like, it should be, you know... There should be a spectrum. Anyway, but this is kind of important, I think, because this, I think, determines how much starting money you have, which makes it seem like, you know, you should just go wealthy every time. But what we're going to do is we're just going to do middle income. Wait, is this the one that determines our money or is it our what we study at university? I actually forgot. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so... We open our eyes, and we're going to come from a middle-income family in the house of Holsor. Just middle of the road, you know. I know, I know. If like you middle know, and just you got to you got to start from the ground up. You got to go, you know, you know, start poor. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to save that for my soulless run. I want to go from being a very poor person in the kingdom of Swordland to eventually rising to to being the president, and then that's going to be like, oh man, because then because then the role play would be like of my character would be. You know, I was I was born dirt poor, but the changes that Soul made, Tarkwood Soul made, made it possible for someone like me to be president. And I'm going to use my authority to make this country a better place. Or worse place, I don't know. Your parents named you Anton. As the only child of a diligent civil servant, you lived quite an ordinary childhood. Life was not bad. You were lucky enough to attend a well-known public school. But frequent fights broke out at the Rain family home. Those made you feel uneasy. The years passed. So yeah, we've got the we got the years up here. I think I think we go to 1953 or something. That's where we'll actually start the game. September 9th, 1923. During a history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. You heard a loud commotion outside. As everyone tried to figure out what was going on, the principal announced the historic revolution. The kingdom was no more. The Republic of Swordland was born. So let's see. I would be 15 at this point. Uh, you did not fully understand. After graduating, you passed the university exam with high marks. You had the opportunity to choose between several studies. You chose uh, so I could do law, economics, or history. Now, I don't know what these do. I think that I chose history the first time I played because, you know, obviously conquering history games, gotta study history. Um, but I kind of wonder if I want to do economics. 
I don't know, going to business school? Going to business school doesn't seem very conducive to becoming a millennialist. Although studying economy could be, because it's like a study of the economy and then I want to do that. Um, no, no, Let, let's just, uh, let's do law, let's do law. I'll save, I'll save economy, economics when I do a full capitalist run. Law at the Whole Sword State University. I don't want to do history every time. Let's switch it up. During the first year, you attended a lecture with David Visky. He was a well-known diplomat from the foreign ministry and the son of the president. After observing the hall in silence, he explained how the Supreme Court is obstructing justice in Swordland. He stated that laws should be applied fairly and that even the members of the Supreme Court are subject to the same laws. So, uh, yeah, this was the guy who, who's meeting. We're going to meet him later. Um... Uh, he was the one who I got a little emotional. I was getting a little choked up during a particular scene with him. Just There's some good writing in this game. It tells a good story. I think. Uh, so, about the law. Uh, we're studying law. Laws should be applied fairly. Even members of the Supreme Court are subject to the same law. Um, yeah, I guess I should agree in principle. Yeah, I don't want to question that. Uh, or, oh, then again, question. Uh, only concern was passing. Uh, yeah, you agree in principle. You see, yeah, because that's what I think might end up happening. Maybe I'm going to go full authoritarian. Maybe I'm not. But I definitely think that it's probably, I might have to try to go for a mix. You know, and sometimes, you know, do something where it's like, you know what? Principles are nice. I'm all for the better na nature, angels of our nature. But sometimes we got to let those uh, better angels have some fucking authority. So they can get things done. If I could paraphrase a line from Ken Burns' uh, Roosevelt's, I think it was episode... Episode... Five? Anyway. May 22nd, 1927. Soldiers entered the campus in the evening ahead of the first election. Many were in shock as the uniformed men created a security corridor and started arresting the teachers. A group of students started gathering in protest along with your best friend, Peter Vector, and you decide to... Let's protest with the students. Also... Peter was kind of a joke. It's like how, like how avoiding con any confrontation, you know, he was just like right in the middle. He didn't seem to stand for anything. I wonder if that's rooted in if you do avoid any confrontation or if it's just like a joke. Either way, let's see. So we decide to protest with the students. One of the officers made a loud announcement that echoed through the campus. Um, hmm... General Ludren declared martial law in order to restore the administration. Please stand back and disperse to your rooms. You join the students that slowly march towards the large group of soldiers. Suddenly, the soldiers uh, charged. A student fell and was trampled as everybody started running away. You held your ground. I'm changing this because I want to see if it's going to change a, a conversation later with my son. Oh, well, a few different reasons, actually. The soldiers beat you relentlessly. It was a gloomy year. Okay. The arrested teachers um, were replaced by those that promoted conformism to the state. Whole sword turned a blind eye to the things that were happening. You didn't want to stay idle and decided to join... Uh, where's the thing that I could... I thought this was a thing where I'm supposed to be able to join the Red Youth, or is that later? Would that be a political debate group? I don't know. Let's do a human rights group. I think I, I, think I did political debate the first time. Because I remember the first time I was doing RNG also a lot of it. I just was like rolling a dice. The group heavily protested against the deteriorating human rights situation in Swordland. You contributed in through discussions uh, on how to protect and expand freedoms. In one of the meetings, Peter introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who was a volunteer for the Swordish League of Women. You were immediately attracted to her diligence. Diligence is good. Good quality in any person. Uh, the politically charged environment led you to, very easy, join the Red Youth, the Socialists. I think that also uh, will set me up for an achievement later. I think um, where if I joined the Red Youth when I was a kid, and then if I fund them while I'm president, um, it's an achievement. 
<clears throat> June 2nd, 1928, the radio relayed that the communist general Ricard surrounded Lundgren and his troops demanding their surrender. They refused and heavy fighting broke out across the country. You just couldn't believe it. The army was fighting amongst themselves. Swordland plunged into chaos. So, yeah, we had a republic for four years, and there was an army coup, and then one of the generals was to the left. Um, so, yeah, I guess they do use the term communist in here then. So I might still sometimes say communist as well as millenniavist. Ma ma millenniavist. Um, probably going to try to lean towards saying millenniavist. Uh, Ricard's sudden attack caused more instability in the country, but compared to fascist Lutheran, he was a real socialist. This convinced you to participate in a support march. You were chanting... Freedom, equality, and solidarity, work as the world unite, or bring down the fascist. This is tough. I guess this comes down to if I want to align myself politically with, with I guess this is like my first big decision. So, so basically, as a reminder, um, you're kind of coming into their ver world's version of the Cold War, where you've got a capitalist system, major world power, and then there's the millenniavist major world power um what's uh, cortana cortana yeah it's cortana it's, sorry guys. it's been like two months since i played this game uh cortana yeah so i'm kind of i think i think we're gonna want to align with cortana yeah either way it'll be good for us yeah i think the only downside would be if we end up in the war it could potentially go nuclear nuclear uh but we could also just try to avoid the war which i think i might want to do because the war is apparently very complicated now to win you gotta stack up a lot of things so if we can avoid the war i want to try to avoid the war um we'll save you know victory for for a soulless run or a capitalist run or something i will get my revenge on the queen don't worry uh so let's do workers of the world unite Classic final line of the Malianivist, uh, Malianivist uh, Manifesto. You were marching under the protection of Ricard's soldiers. The students opposing the coup gathered a few hundred meters in front of you. Many nationalists were among them. You knew something was going to happen. This is interesting. This is a different situation. I guess it's because I joined the, 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 the red... The right coup. The students opposing the coup gathered a few hundred many nationalists were among them. You knew something was going to happen. Yeah, this is a different... I guess once I joined the Red Youth, my event tree changed. Uh, let's stay. What's going to happen? There was a massive clash between the two sides. Soldiers began to beat the students. Tanks started rolling forward. In this chaotic moment, you saw a young girl about to get run over by a tank. Uh, you ran to save her, but you couldn't reach her in time. You never forgot her face. The clashes escalated into a full-blown civil war. The horrors made you isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope, and love grew between the two of you. However, it was a difficult time for love. The chaos must end. The charismatic colonel, Tarquin Sol, orchestrated a sudden coup and brought an end to the chaos. He wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a savior. He formed the United Swordland Party and ran as a presidential candidate. In the first ever uh, elections... Mm -hmm, let's see here... Yeah. Yeah, we'll vote for him. Gonna not vote. Pfft. What am I, somebody in my live stream chat? Guys, vote on this decision. Nah. I'll just complain about whatever he chooses to do later after after not voting for it. <laughs> so, to review, we started as a kingdom, 1923, coup happens, republic, happy fun times for four years, bam, fascist coup, one year later, bam, counter coup with, uh, with the communists, except it's not actually a counter coup, it's just full-blown chaos, and then one year later, Tarquin Sol manages to just get everybody put down, and he and he's like, you know, taking charge. USB won the election by a large majority. After graduation, you kept seeing Monica and noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived from the military calling you to fulfill your compulsory service. It was time to serve your national duty. February 1930, Bergia region. 
a devastating civil war broke out in the neighboring country, Wellen. The distinguished major, Josef Lancia, ordered you to lead your squad on a border patrol mission. It was a very cold winter night when you began marching out of Gumbrin outpost. You could see your breath. After several hours of marching through the snowy hills, distant noises were heard. Visibility was too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in formation and found a spot to reserve. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fence. You... <sighs> we're gonna let him slip through. After the patrol, Major Lancia arrived with anger and immediately relieved you of your command, calling you a disappointment. One of your squad members had reported your actions. After several months of scrubbing the floors as a punishment, your duties ended and you went back to civilian life. My command? I guess I forgot that. That I Yeah, I actually had a command. I wasn't just a grunt. I guess that sort of makes sense. I had gone to university. I guess they made me an officer. 1931. You and Monica decided to share your lives together. After receiving the blessings of her parents, a ceremony was held in Holsort. During the same year, you worked hard to secure a high-paying job at the governing United Swordland Party. It was much more difficult to start your career on a good foot because of the refugee incident, but you still managed. Um, working was the easiest path to power. Financial compensation. It was the best opportunity to change the country for the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is going to be hard. I, I, I'm anticipating this is going to be an extremely difficult run. Because we had issues just reforming to, like, liberal democracy. Lowercase liberal, you know. Um, this is, this is, we're going to be, either we're going, like, full-blown socialist welfare state or going authoritarianism, but with, communist characteristics either way i think this is going to be a lot trickier it's going to be much harder to work with people um so so you got to figure my guy he's like okay i gotta get in the party i gotta make the changes i gotta work in a pragmatic way in a way that like you know i've got i've got to reform from within um and that's gonna be difficult so but i gotta work from the inside it's my best shot so you became the legal assistant to one of the more experienced members of the assembly. You worked hard, long and hard, staying late at work and going through hundreds of pages of legal documents. You were climbing the ladder. September 1933. Soul strengthened the Republic by removing the institutions and symbols of the former kingdom from society. Things were also looking up for the country as the massive economic boom continued and people were the happiest they'd been in a decade. Election time came and it was decided. Pre President Tarquin Soul was elected once more. April 2nd, 1934. The ongoing legal battle between the Justice Ministry and the Supreme Court puts you under a lot of stress, but your significant contribution to the legal case triggered an invitation to meet President Tarquin Sol himself, who offered you a key position. You were to become the youngest member of the Assembly. Uh, we're going to say we accept with doubts, because it's like, hmm, what? You didn't... You didn't, uh, I didn't get elected and I'm going to be in the assembly. What? You know? <laughs> so, but, but yeah, as we'll see later, he's got an awful lot of power. This is not a democracy or at least not a, <sighs> there's democracy elements, but we got a ways to go. Uh, and you know, when the executive picks like who the mayor is, who the, uh, things like who the mayor is, who the assembly are, you know, a little room for improvement, but who knows? Maybe we're going to go authoritarianism. Either way, we're accepting with doubts. As the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with the influential inner circle. You needed allies, so you brought Peter as your right-hand man. The birth of your son, Frank, provided a moment of relief. You sacrificed work to spend time with your family. Yeah. Um... During your absence, Peter found trustworthy contacts and strengthened your position in the party. At the same time, President Sol increased his authority over the years. His growing ego started to cause strife within the party. The cracks began to show. Four years later, <laughs> cracks are happening. Anyway, four years later, uh, President Sol barely secured a majority in the election against the opposition leader. 
Over the past year, people were growing discontent with corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, calls for a united Swordland Party Congress became louder as a leadership struggle started to brew. You, um... Kept supporting the president. Gotta bide our time. The contender for party leadership was Edwald Alfonso, a reformist and talented business magnate with a growing popularity within the party. You were trying to secure votes for President Sol, who noticed your loyalty and approached you with a lucrative deal. Oh, what's this? The president offered you the position of Minister of Justice and Law in the next government if you backed him in the upcoming vote. Really? What? Okay. Hold on, it's 45. When does Alphonse take control? Is this going to happen? Am I going to become Minister of Justice and Law? Hmm. Well, it's more than Alfonso's operating me. If I was the Minister of Justice, I could definitely reform from within. You know, be like Nia. Nia was my favorite character, by the way, in, um, in the first playthrough. My favorite cabinet member, I should say, not character. Because everybody's favorite character is Sergei, of course. Sergei's the best, and I will hear nothing against him. Uh, let's see, August 1946. The party congress was nothing short of impressive. The banners of United Swordland were decorating every possible spot. Thousands of influential political figures, lobbyists, and benefactors gathered for this turning point. The voting for the party leadership began. You voted for Tarquin Sol. Unfortunately, Sol lost the leadership vote to Edouard Alfonso with a small margin. During the Congress, Sol announced his retirement from politics. The systems he had established were to stay much longer. His achievements wouldn't be forgotten. You, um, uh, let's say I was troubled. Yeah, because Alfonso, if I remember, he's a he's a capitalist. Um, and from what I remember, especially on the political tree that you see at the end of the game, uh, I remember her soul, like, leans, you know, socialist. You know, like, using... Obviously, you know, the political square is not a perfect system, but it's like, he's for nationalism, not capitalism between the two. Like, you know, national control of corporations and different things. October 15th, 1946. Too bad it couldn't be a 25th St. Crispin's Day. Oh, well. A month later, your daughter was born. Monica named her Deanna. She motivated you during a tumultuous period in the party. The general elections were approaching. The United uh, Swordland Party was under the new leadership of Ewald Alfonso. Um, you did your best not to help him. I think that's the way to go because... Uh, because, yeah, he's a, he's a capitalist from what I remember. During the general elections, the main opposition leader was embroiled in a sex scandal with his secretary, diminishing their chances. The extensive privatization program proposed by Ewald Alfonso secured an election victory for the United Swordland Party. Over the next years, you... Uh, did your best in order to make Swordland a better place. 1951, the presidency of Ewald Alfonso saw many bold reforms, but it was followed by a serious economic recession. The other parties announced their bids for the 1953 election, but the unfair system hampered all opposition efforts to win. You worried that your reputation would be tarnished with, along with Alfonso. Actually, am I worried? No, I'm worried about the economic recession, actually. Yeah. Together with Peter, your presence in the USP grew and you became the face of a new wing of the party. You effectively took over the leadership as President Alfonso lost control of the country. The moment to make a move had come. You... Uh, blamed Alfonso for the crisis on television. Yeah, because we're blaming his privatization efforts. We're going to roll that shit back. Excuse my language. January 1953. The media backlash prompted President Alfonso to reshuffle his cabinet, but most of his inner circle abandoned him. The party eventually voted for you because of your charisma as a leader. Following this, you announced that you would be running for president in the general election with Peter as your running mate. It was your turn. October 1953. After visiting every, uh, every city and town during the campaign, you made a speech on state television. You promised to enact democratic reforms. 
You know, it's just promises. I'm an authoritarian, who cares? The people are tired of entering promises. We need fundamental change in our institutions and government. A solid and transparent democracy awaits us, brothers and sisters. A new constitution and a new age is upon us. The broadcast ended. On election day, millions went out to cast their vote. On the 5th of November, huh? It was time to face the truth. Oh boy, do you think I'll win? Chapter 1, President Rain. I'm going to have to think of a thumbnail for this uh, series. Because I can't just use the regular suzerain thing. Okay, so first things first. Uh, you know, we're probably going to just make our face here and then save quit and call that a day. So, um, this, the, 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 the face style that we're going to be going for was determined via, you know, a chat session, a live stream during chat. Everybody put in, you know, we put in our thoughts, we brainstormed it for a while. Okay, there was a lot of thought that went in on this. So, let's start with the background. Um, red. Uh, maroon is, I think, the national color. And I think red is too, but we're still going to go with red because, come on. Obviously, we're going to go for red. Uh, so we're going to go bottom to top. Uh, first thing, accessories. We, you know, we've read a lot of theory, uh, and it's time to put it to use. We're going to go with some kind of thin glasses. Not quite the roundness of, like, Trotsky, but, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of famous. You know, it's kind of got, like, that that Trotsky, uh, Gramsci thing going on. Um, you know, Antonio Gramsci. Wait, we're Antonio Gramsci? Yeah, I think his glasses were round. So we went with the round, thin glasses uh here so attire uh though we decided to go we wanted to we wanted to really dress up uh, not not a tuxedo not swordland first either but uh, we were gonna go with the uh hold on i got my notes here i took a screenshot yeah we were gonna go with grand attire yeah full-blown three-piece suit looking good crisp white shirt nice red tie vest blazer boom looking nice you know we're not gonna let people say we look run down or something. We, you know, we're revolutionary, but we look good doing it. Um, and you know, and, and the colors work. I think they work with the background green. Now the facial hair. There's a lot here that we worked on. We eventually decided to go with the revolutionary. Now here's the thing. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know about Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin, when he would, he was the minister to the, the you know, he was he was off being an ambassador to the French during the American Revolution. He would wear the the buckskin hat. So what we're gonna do here is is uh, we're gonna go we're going with like this 20s kind of ca soft cap. Um, but again, the three piece suit. Nobody's gonna say we look like a bum. We look good. We're gonna be si we're gonna be using serious theory. Remember, millennialism and Cortana controls an entire continent, not to mention the other socialist countries around the world that we're going to be calling on. All right, this is serious, strong ideology, and we're going to look fucking good bringing the revolution and liberating the workers. All right, cursing a lot, I'm sorry. Um, uh, but anyway, there you have it. You will not be able to change how President Rain looks from this point forward. Are you sure? Uh, let me double check. Yeah, twenties, revolutionary, grand, thin glasses. I think I think that's it. We're a winner. Just you know, the hat to remind us of our roots. Now, election promises. As Anton Rain, you have made many uh, promises to the people of Swordland in order to gain their votes. They must be considered very carefully. Economy. Sorlin's economy has been based on planned doctrine since its formation until the former president, Iwald Alfonso, enacted free market reforms. Now the country finds itself in between two different economic systems. So we go free market or planned. We're going planned, which from what I've read is quite difficult um, in terms of fixing the economy. It doesn't appear to be impossible, but like with the free market, because at the end of the day, it's only one term of office. Free market seems to be easier because you just start auctioning everything off, right? And you got plenty of money. Now there might be long-term consequences if you're not doing things properly. Like, you know, you got to even plan when you go for free market, right? But if you're just giving everything away, it could go bad in a hurry. Planned economy is going to be harder. We're going to still try it. I'm hoping that in a pinch, we could just like get some help from Cortana or something. I don't know how that works though. So diplomacy, the intensifying global rivalry between capitalist Arcasia in the West and communist United Quantana in the East is opening new diplomatic possibilities. Sorlin could take steps to align itself closer to one. So uh, we're going to align to the East here. Um, that's going to be a core tenant. Yeah, did I say Cortana? It's Quantana. I think Cortana is like a 
Is that like a character from Halo or something? Anyway. Immigration. In recent years, Bloodish, Vesic, and Agnolian immigrants flocked to Swordland due to relaxed immigration laws enacted by Edouard Alfonso. As a result, tensions between swords and immigrants have been increasing. I guess this could kind of go either way. Um, but I think we're going to keep it relaxed because I remember getting some nice, some economic buffs. Like I, I didn't have a perfect economy first time I played, but I remember there being buffs from getting immigrants to come in. Uh, so I guess we'll just keep it relaxed. Uh, and we can always change this later, but of course, you know, it's going to piss people off if we go the opposite of what we promised. But yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. Planned economy, align with the East, keep immigration relaxed. Uh, okay. Um... We have also promised to focus on certain extensive subjects within our first term. The people expect us to solve the negative situations within this topic while providing an overall improvement to the related policies. I think I did education the first time. Um, I'm not going to do military because I'm going to try to avoid the war or I'm going to have Quintana there to help me. So I don't think we necessarily need to focus strong on the military. Um... Law enforcement could be good. Uh, you know what? Let's go with health. Because I'm definitely going to increase the health. For sure. Because we got to stop um, the polio. Although I don't know if the polio always shows up. But I think health is an easy one to promise because we'll definitely do it. So we got to get life expectancy up. We got to get the differences in service quality between urban and rural hospitals uh, improved. These promises will be remembered. They will have consequences. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, that's it. I think we're we're square. Um, and now I was about to be sworn in as the fourth president of Swordland. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me uh, for this initial episode. In the next one, we'll get started on you know chapter one, turn one, uh, and we'll see what happens. Like I said, uh, even though we know I'm going to be trying to go millennialist. I don't know how authoritarian or not I'm going to go, and I also don't know what kind of dialogue options or different sort of crises are going to show up. Um, so we'll just have to see. You know, But I, I would imagine that uh, old Tusk, the oligarch, isn't going to like me very much on this run, which is just fine with me because I don't fucking like him either. I'm conquering history games. Uh... Please subscribe if you have not already, and please and you know click the bell so you'll be notified whenever a new uh, episode goes up on the channel. Uh, take care.